In this video, I'm going to cover texturing a simple object in Marmoset Toolbag and bringing that over into Unreal Engine 4. Now, what we're going to be doing is the model's already made. It's right here in Blender. And I have two materials inside of Blender. So I'm going to show you how you can bake out a material ID map using Marmoset and then use that in order to make your actual material for the asset. Well, only make it so you have to use one material for the asset. So we don't want duplicate materials for something as simple as this, especially considering if you have a bunch of these in the world, for example, and they had two materials, well, you're wasting an extra draw call having those two materials, when instead you could just simply have one. So that's mostly what we're going to be focusing on here. So what we're going to do is use Marmoset to apply a basic color Get it roughly close to the yellow and the pink for the lid. And then we're going to work on getting a logo off of Google, stamping that on, and then using that logo inside of GIMP to create a normal map that we will place on top of the lid here to give the illusion of actual height data. So just like the real lids, it's going to have that information up here. So I think that's pretty much it. So we should be able to go ahead and begin. So first things first, I'm going to start with a new Marmoset scene, and I want to go ahead and bring in my object. Now that has been exported, actually it has not, so let me export it real quick. So I'm currently going to export with two materials. So I have the lid and the cup. As you can see, the lid is obviously the lid, it's red, and the cup part is blue. So I'm just going to export FBX. Now I already have a preset that I have made. And I'll run through the settings here in a second. Okay, so the preset check selected objects. I'm only going to export armature and mesh. You can just do mesh, it's fine, because there's no armature to it. Then under geometry, smoothing, select face. And if there's any modifiers applied, I would go ahead and apply modifiers, which I actually need to do this real quick. I need to add a triangulate just to make sure. So I'm going to add a triangulate modifier. Because anytime you import to Unreal Engine or something like that, the mesh itself is going to be triangulated anyhow. So if you triangulate in the modifier or in the uh, modeling program you're using, you will have the same result across the board because different software might triangulate your model differently. So if you triangulate beforehand, that's going to keep it consistent across different engines or rendering engines. So now that that's done. Go ahead and just, again, select the objects, smoothing, set to face, and apply modifiers, and then just go ahead and export. There it is, right here. Okay, now in Marmoset, under the scene, I'm just going to right-click, import model, or you can press Control-I, and find your model, and open it up. So over here, we have the cup and the lid, now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just have, I want to go ahead and bake the material ID. So we're going to right click in our scene, go to bake project. And here you can see we have the high and the low poly section for the high obviously being your high poly mesh, the low being your low poly. Well, we only have one mesh. So we're going to use that mesh for both, just kind of how you would with a substance painter with that little checkbox that says use high as low poly or low poly as high poly. I can't remember exactly. So I'm going to click where it says complete here, right underneath the mesh name, drag onto the low, then right click and duplicate it, and then drag the duplicate into the high. So we have one mesh under the complete or underneath high and one underneath of low. Let's click on bake project one. I'm going to go ahead and go to the output and change the path. So I want mine to be here and I'm going to do I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just going to call it material ID and hit save. There it says the path and everything that you need. And then we're just going to hit bake. So here we have it right here. Let's go ahead and open that up real quick. That's not it. Give it a second. And did I open up the wrong thing? I think I did. Oh, I know what I did. I accidentally baked the normals. So if you come down here, you can have an option of what you want to bake. I want to uncheck normal. 
and check material ID. And then I'm gonna hit bake. So now here we have the material ID and the normal. So I'm just gonna delete the normal and open up the material ID. And here we should be good to go, which we are. So obviously red is for the uh, lid and blue is for the cup. Now that we have that, let's go back to Blender, go to the materials, and I'm going to delete the lid material and simply export again, like so. Then press Control Z. So I have that material back and I can just go ahead and close out of Blender. So we now have everything we need. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a new scene since I haven't really done anything else and re-import the model. I'm gonna take a screenshot, but once we re-import, we no longer have the lid material. So we know that we are good to go and we can actually begin working on the texturing. Now what we're using the material ID for is, I'll actually show you here in a second. So we're gonna go to layers and add a texture project, go back to materials, and I'm gonna click and drag on M underscore cup and drop it into where it says linked materials. So now a quick example on what the material ID will be used for. So I'm gonna go to materials and just go to plastic and rubber. And here's plastic scuffed. If I go to drag it out, it's all white. So if I drag it, it's just gonna cover the entire mesh. Now, if I import my material ID by clicking here and opening it up, now when I drag and drop, I can drop it either onto the cup like so, or onto the lid like that. They're two separate portions that share the same UV. So that's how we can get separate textures. Well, very easy to make it so it's separate between uh, different objects that are using and sharing the same UV layout or UV map. So now that that is pretty much handled, we can actually begin texturing it up. So I like using the plastic scuffed that's under materials, plastic and rubber. There's also plastic glossy, which gets you kind of close. However, it's quite bright. So we would need to crank the roughness up a bit and find a good kind of balance. But I've already done this once before and plastic scuff just right out of the box looks good to me. But what we're going to start on is, let's see, here's the model that I went ahead and downloaded to use for this. Go ahead and do a cup and try to get a closer idea of what the color should be if there's even a good picture on here. It'll be close enough. So we're going to be kind of mimicking this guy here. So it's a kind of a washed out yellow with kind of reminds me of a salmon kind of pinkish lid. So we're going to go ahead and try to mimic that. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop onto the cup and try to get the yellow. Now, if we head over here to layers, you can see where we have the plastic scuffed that we just dragged out. And if we click on the mask right here, the mask is using the color selection. So it's using our material ID for color selection. So if I click on it, if I wanted to, I could add the blue as well and combine them. So that way it's filling both materials or both sections of or where our previous materials would be. So it's filling the cup and the lid. I'm trying to think of how to explain it. So I'm going to click on the orange slash reddish section here, and I'm going to convert this to yellow. So here we have the albedo map, or in Unreal Engine, you would see it as the base color. And let's just click here and try to get as close to yellow as we can. And try to get just a rough representation of it. Maybe a little darker. And that's close enough for me. And then I want to go ahead and do the lid. So I'm going to drag plastic scuffed onto the lid. And already this is actually quite close. We just need to kind of dull it out. So I'm going to drag you down. Better yet. I want to go that red. Try to get a pinkish. And I think that's okay there. 
Now I just want to make the bottom portion a little more shiny. So I'm going to click the yellow. And our roughness, I'm just going to lower a little bit. All right, there's the reflection. Let's crank it up some. So here we have some shine, but not a whole lot. I'm going to a little higher on the roughness. And just so it has that kind of somewhat shiny plastic look to it. And then for the lid, I think the lid's okay as it is, but it would be the same principle here. So we're good to go there. Now I want to go ahead and do the logo. So if I go ahead and go back and search for Play Doh logo. I'm going to try to find a square image, like this guy right here. So you can just right click, save image as. I've already saved it there, but I'm going to do it again. And save. Now I want just the logo. I don't want any background or anything like that. And that's where I'm going to go ahead and use GIMP. So let's open GIMP real quick. I'll open and open up the downloaded file. Go ahead and click convert and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this one base and drag it to the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and just try to crop out the section here like so. Doesn't need to be even remotely close to perfect. Just control C, hide click on base and control V and just add it to a new layer. So I notice for whatever reason, if I try to erase here, okay, that's even more odd. And it's erasing to the second color. That's kind of neat. And yeah, whatever. So I want to go ahead and delete that layer, delete base, which I actually really didn't need to make, but we're left with this. So now when I try to erase, it actually goes through and erases it. So I'm going to go up here and use the fuzzy select tool and click the outside white and go to the erase, crank the size up and the hardness and just get rid of the remaining areas around it. So that way we have mostly just the image left. Then I'm going to go to select and hit none. So it deselects everything. Make the brush smaller. Try to erase the remaining parts of the corners. Like so. And here we have our logo. You can obviously do more cleanup, which is not really a bad idea, but that's about all I'm going to do here. So I'm going to go file, export as. And here's my new logo. I'm going to do Play-Doh logo. And just click export. And I actually want to do it as a TGA. So I want to change it to dot .TGA. Uncheck compression. Oops. And hit export. So now we have this guy right here, that is going to work as our logo. So now we need to try to paint it on to the side of the, uh, the side of the cup here. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to click on our plastic scuffed, or let's actually make a group. So we're going to click the folder, add a group, and name this one cup. I'm going to drag plastic scuffed into it since it's related to the cup. And I'm going to go ahead and add a Mask, I'm going to do a paint black. Okay, not sure why you ended up doing that. Right click anywhere, add a paint layer, and drag it right above our plastic sculpt. So now in here, I can paint on top, and we're just going to simply pretty much paint the logo. So let's go ahead and try to figure that out. Here we have the paint layer. So we can add whatever we want in here. I don't want any roughness, metal, normal, occlusion, or bump. I just want the albedo. So I'm going to click on the load texture. 
and click our Play-Doh logo and hit open. Crank the size of the brush up. And if I draw it, you can see here, it's kind of drawing and painting it on as if it's already there and we're just revealing it. That's not what we want. What I'm gonna do is Control-Z, projection method, I'm gonna change to fit to brush. Now when I hit play or drag it on, you can see it's placing kind of like a sticker. Now we just gotta change the actual brush. So we can go over here to tool settings and change some settings here. However, under alignment, I want to check or change it to sticker. So now when I hit click it, it's doing the same thing. So we need to angle it differently. So let's go up to like to route 270. Let's go farther. Let's go to 300 ish. To, I don't know, 280. And that's pretty close there. Now, if you notice that you're getting random rotations, how you see how mine are completely straight, click the drop down here under your angle you'll have your jitter, it might be set to some random value. And that jitter is going to give you random rotations like this. So you want to click the drop down, drag your jitter to zero, and then you will have your, uh, your, you will be drawing on completely straight. It won't be changing the rotation or anything like that of the actual angle. Now let's just crank our size up, try 270, go bigger. 12 is pretty huge. Let's try to find a size reference real quick. So it's about uh, actually isn't that far off. I'm going to say we're actually pretty close there. So I'm just going to drag it downward a little bit. I think that's about the right distance from the top and bottom. And here we have our Play-Doh logo. And we're pretty much good to go there. Now the only thing that we actually have to do is we need that warning label up on the top here. So that little, uh, this guy. We want to create a normal map based from this logo and stamp it on. Well, pretty much not necessarily stamp, but draw it on how we kind of just did. So back in GIMP, what we can do is we can go up here to Colors, Desaturate, Colors to Gray, and here you can kind of change it however you want. However, the thing is, we need a back, I kind of want to have a background of this. That way it's not just this, well, actually I'm kind of curious, how does that look? Ignore what I'm doing real quick. I might... Be... Yeah, I'm going to go this route. So we're going to come up here to Colors, Desaturate, Color to Gray. And if you wanted the more, the more kind of traditional... Let me look up a random normal map. Yeah, the spelling. Grew. If you wanted more of a traditional kind of normal map, you'll have the surrounding area baked in. So it'll all be kind of one consistent color, and then you'll have your aggressive changes here. So if you want to go this route, all you would have to do is pretty much add a back layer. So I'm going to add a new layer. Drag it below the pasted layer, so that way we can't draw on top, for example, like this. Go completely white and just fill. So now, if I come up here to colors, desaturate, colors to gray. Okay, apparently that's doing both layers. Why are you doing that? I'm not entirely sure how to join layers either. Let's see. Can I copy this layer and paste it onto this layer? Merge down. There we go. So we're going to right click on our pasted layer or our logo and hit merge down. 
Now our layers are merged here. Go to Colors, Desaturate, Color to Gray. And I don't know why you're still showing white, unless that actually doesn't really matter. I thought this would change. Yeah, we'll keep going. It'll probably be fine. So anyways, here I kind of want to crank the samples up a little bit. I want to try to get some of the graininess out of the gray. I just, the only thing I did was I cranked the samples up some. Cranked the radius up. And it's looking pretty smooth. And that's kind of what I want. So that looks good to me. So I'm going to press OK. Now if you needed to, you could change the levels. But that's not really needed. And I can't tell if this is part of my monitor. Right here is that part of the image. I think that's part of the image. I'm going to go ahead and paint white. OK, yeah, it's part of the image. So here we just have some random little gray spots around. I'm going to go ahead and just paint over those. And what we can do now is come up here to Filters, Generic, Normal Map, and here we have it. So you can see there's a lot of graininess around the background. You can see where I drew. That's okay. I kind of want to clean that up some. So I'm just going to actually undo what I did and see what it looks like. At least some high spots. So I'm going to select everywhere around it just like before. And just do a bucket fill for white. So it's a solid color. Then I want to select none and paint over the gray spots. And now it should look more natural. Like so. So we have a little bit of, I don't even know what you necessarily call that, a little graining, <clears throat> graininess here and here. But that's not too big of a deal, especially considering it's going on plastic that is most likely molded. So here we have our normal map. And you can change the intensity here. So if it's at 10, let's go up to 76. You can just see how much more aggressive it gets. And I kind of want to leave mine at about 10. And press OK. And here's our normal map. So I'm going to go File, Export As, Play-Doh Logo underscore in and press export and same thing again export now I want to go ahead and do the same thing that we did here but for the lid where we paint on the normal map I'm going to create a new group just to keep it kind of clean pull it lid and drag our plastic scuffed into lid and minimize our cup section I'm just going to right click and add a paint layer and it's already linked itself inside of the lid uh, folder and here I want to add the normal map so I'm going to uncheck albedo, bump, occlusion, roughness, metallic and leave just the normal. Now let's load up our normal map by just clicking here in the gray uh, checkerboard and loading up the normal map we just made. Crank up the size of the brush and click. As you can see, we're not really seeing anything. So what I can do is I can bring in the albedo that's set to white and make sure that it is painting, which it is. So I want to go ahead and crank up the contrast for the normal. Click again. And it still seems like nothing is painting. I'm going to go ahead and look at our logo, make sure it exported properly which it did, because there it is. Now try to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to try to paint right here, and it's painting. So we're having the issue of it not painting where the brush is, like before. So if you were trying to paint, and you don't know what's going on, if you come over here to Projection Method, change it from UV to Fit to Brush, and click. And now you can see it is on your brush. So for alignment, I'm just going to do sticker. And I'm going to get it kind of straight-ish with this guy here, or our other logo. I got the size, change the angle. A little further. Wrong direction. So 222, let's just do 225. And paint. 
Let's go up a little bit. And that's about centered. Now, if you're noticing that it's not quite rough enough to your liking, what you can do is you can crank the contrast up, and that kind of does what the setting did inside of here. We're making it more aggressive, as you can see. So you can see it's kind of getting that little, little bit of artifacting going on. I don't know what you would call that. So I'm going to change the contrast back down to 1. And click. Look at it. And for the most part, it's you can see the grain in this only when you go over and you can see the reflection. So this might be a little too shiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Roughness and just drag up the roughness a little bit. Let's see if that does anything. Which it doesn't really seem to be. Yeah, so that's not affecting it at all. But that's probably due to our base layers down here. So if I were to increase the roughness of a base layer, then it affects it. So click the little orange guy, drag the roughness up a little bit. We'll go down just a hair. It has some shine to it. And we can look at our Play-Doh. And here's our logo. And I think that looks pretty, pretty good. So this is the finished result that we're going to bring into Unreal Engine. And part of me just noticed for the brush, my hardness was not fully set. So it doesn't matter. We have some softness around the edges. That's I'm not going to worry too much about that. I did the same thing before, as you can tell, where it kind of fades and blends out. But anyways. We have our textured up model, and now let's go ahead and bring that and set it up inside of Unreal Engine. So we're going to go over here to Scene, scroll, we'll click on your texture project, then scroll down to the bottom. And here we have the output size, so the resolution we want to export as. I don't want to do 4K, I'm just going to drop it down to 2048 by clicking the little down arrow, and make sure they're both the same, so they're square. And we want to change the export path. So I'm going to right click, create a new folder, and call it Textures. Open that up. And for the file name, let's do Play Doh. So the only, I don't remember what the defaults are or exactly how to reset them. But the, I think there would have be uh, in a couple different files. So I'm having this set up for the mix map. It's going to export as the type R plus G plus B. And I want my red to be my ambient occlusion, my green channel to be roughness, and my blue channel to be metallic. And that's pretty much the same way that I export out of substance. So I want to keep it consistent. So that way anything I do, I can pretty much just kind of plug and play. So that's pretty much all you need to have set. Everything else for the most part will be handled. Uh, I export in target format. You can do target or PNG. I wouldn't do JPEG, as that generally has some suppression to it. And I've never bothered trying to export as PSD. I don't have Photoshop or anything to bother with. So anyways, once you have everything you have set that you want, just click Export All. Now in our Textures folder, we have three new images. So we're going to go up here, back into Unreal Engine. Let me just delete all this. and we can begin importing. So I want to import my mesh, so that's my Play-Doh cup. Just drag and drop, everything default. I'm not gonna bother creating materials, so I'm just gonna, actually, I'm gonna do create new materials and hit import, because I'm only gonna have one being created. Then I wanna drag and drop my textures in here. So my Beto, my mix map, and my normal, drag and drop. We're gonna open up the mix map, and uncheck sRGB. That's only going to be for our, our uh, albedo texture. So that's already checked by default. Next up, we want to open up our material. Remove the first parameter there. And drag and drop our three textures into our material edit editor. I'm having a hard time talking. 
and I organize these as albedo, normal, and then the mix map. So what we're going to do is in our uh, albedo, we drag our RGB to our base color, our normal map RGB to normal, and then remember our mix map, the red channel is occlusion, green is roughness, blue is metallic. That's going to translate out here. So red, occlusion, green, roughness, and blue, metallic. And let's just hit save. And let's drag out our cup. So here's our Play-Doh cup. We have a stamped image. We have our normal kind of baked on the top there. And that looks pretty nice. Our textures are a little bit different. So that's going to be kind of dependent on lighting, and I just, I'm using the default setup inside of Marmoset. So there's things that you can do to kind of give it a more one-to-one -one look, so what you see in a Marmoset can kind of translate more to Unreal Engine, and vice versa. But that's not really, I'm not an artist. I don't really tinker with anything like that, so I'm just kind of learning as I go, since I finally actually have software that doesn't have a student license on it so anyways for the most part that's all and anytime you want to make a little change so for example let's say i'm not very fond of this color of lid let's say i want to darken it some i'll just click on the orange i can just make it a little more red and hit export all now come over to unreal engine highlight all three images and simply re-import, and there we go. We now have the updated lid, and that's gonna kind of work all the way around. You can do whatever you want in that aspect, but you can easily test your changes live that way very quickly. All you have to do is just have it kind of set up initially, and that's about it. So hopefully this kind of gave you a brief overview of working with Marmoset and bring everything into Unreal Engine, more along the lines of just game asset work. Because I had a hard time initially kind of figure out ways to bake a material ID out of this. And this was, I only figured it out today. Anyhow, hopefully that was helpful and at least to some extent. But regardless, I'm going to go back to doing programming tutorials because that's the only thing I seem to be decent at, because my art sucks. So, I will see you in the next video of whatever I end up doing.